What is up you guys, I hope you are doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes and today we're analyzing computers for video and photo editing. Now, chances are that if you're watching this is that you're in the same situation as me, whether you're looking to upgrade your computer or buy a new one for video and photo editing. So we're gonna divide the video into two parts. First of all, we're gonna analyze all the specs needed for video and photo editing. And then we're gonna look up some computers or some prospects that I have in mind in Amazon. So let's get into it. Okay guys, so there are three main aspects that I look into in the spec and that way I can know that a computer can perform properly while editing video. I say video because editing photos doesn't demand as much as programs like Premiere Pro. Now if it performs properly in Premiere Pro, obviously in Lightroom and Photoshop is gonna do it's gonna be a piece of cake. So first things first we have the processor, then we have the graphics card, the RAM memory and I would add the screen and the hard drive. Okay so let's jump into processor and the processor is the heart and brain of the computer. It analyzes all the data and makes it applicable to all our tasks. Okay guys so the processor has two main aspects. It has the number of cores and threads and then it has the base speed and turbo boot. So okay Okay guys, so a simple way to explain what a core is, we can see the processor as a workgroup and the number of employees within that workgroup is going to be the cores or the number of cores. So we can have four, six, eight people working on a single task or in several tasks and the number of threads is going to be the number of tasks that those people can perform. So if you look at the specs and you see a computer with eight cores and eight threads, that means each of those eight cores can perform two tasks simultaneously. So the higher the core count, the higher, the higher the number of employees in that core group, the more efficient and the easier the computer is going to perform simple tasks and more complex ones. Okay, so that's core and threads. Then we have the base speed and the turbo boost. Now the base speed and the turbo boost is simply the speed or the efficiency that those cores are going to work. So those are the things that we're going to look into. Okay guys, in processors there's two brands that dominate the market, that's Intel and there's AMD. Okay, now Intel has a good reputation and AMD is just starting to build up a good reputation. Okay, so in Intel, what we're looking for is an i7 or i9, that's the name of the processor, from the ninth generation to beyond. And in AMD, we're looking for the Ryzen 5, 7 or 9 series. So that's the processor we're looking for, one with four to six to eight cores and working with a good base speed and a good turbo boost. Okay guys, the next spec that we're gonna look into is the graphics card. Now the graphics card is very simple. It's the component that allows all the data to be transformed into visible stuff. So the graphic card connects all the data and the processor to the screen of our computer. Okay guys, so the computers that we're looking into have two graphic cards. One that performs like transforming all the data into visible stuff and the other is a dedicated graphic card. Now the dedicated graphic card, what it does is come into play when we're analyzing programs that require a much more heavy visual effects, like gaming, like photo editing, like video editing, like animation. The dedicated graphic card comes into play and starts working when we're doing that stuff. Now in graphics cards, there's two main competitors. There's Nvidia and then there's AMD again. Now I'm not gonna go into too much detail of teraflops and all, that, all those aspects, but in graphic cards, what we're going to look for is the models. Now in NVIDIA, what we're looking for is minimum a GTX 1070 or a 1160. And then the ideal will be a RTX 260 or 270 or even 280. Now AMD has their equivalent. We have the RX 5500 XT and then we have the RX 5700. All of those are very good graphic cards. But if we had to choose, I would go for the NVIDIA just because they have a little more of history and recommendation in general. Now the third aspect that we're going to look into is the RAM memory. Important to note that the RAM memory is different from the storage devices. RAM memory is temporary storage that allows us to perform several tasks at a time. So a computer with 16 RAM or 32 will be able to perform, open up a lot more programs and perform different tasks at the same time. So in RAM memory what we're looking for is a minimum of 8 gigabytes of RAM and the ideal is 16 to 32 or even more. So that's what we're looking for in a computer. Okay guys, so those are the three main aspects that I look into when I'm searching for a computer for video or photo editing, the processor, the graphics card, and the RAM memory, but I would add two more aspects. Okay, the hard drive or the storage device, we need it to be an SSD, a solid state device. It will allow your computer to export all the files quicker, transport them, and more efficiently, it will open all the files and all the programs. So that's a thing to look into. It's not essential, but I would recommend a solid state hard drive. And the other thing that I would look into is the screen. Now, we all know that video and photo editing professionals have their huge monitors, 5K, Samsung or whatever, the IPC monitors. I'm not ready for that, but I am going to look for a computer with a true tone gamma, maybe a full HD or even 4K screen. That will allow us to have a universal palette that doesn't change between devices. Okay, too many times have I exported a video or, give it, or given it to a client and I realized that the colors in his device are different to the ones I edited. That's because my computer screen isn't 
high quality and it alters the color. So what I'm looking for is a computer with full HD or for even 4K resolution and the true tone quality. Okay guys, so those are the specs. Now let's jump into Amazon and let's see some computers that have all those components that I highly recommend. Okay guys, now let's check out the computers. First things first, let's get the MacBook Pro 16 inch out of the way. I'm not talking about the 13 inch because it doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. Now, let me clarify a little thing. If you're editing on Final Cut Pro or Final Cut X, a MacBook Pro, even the 13 inch or the MacBook Air will do the job just fine. It will run all the clips smoothly, but if you're editing in Premiere Pro, it's a program that demands high quality graphics card. It will stutter and will be lagging. So now let's jump into the specs. And first of all, let's see the giant price tag of $2,800. Now, the price tag is a big bummer if you're looking for a budget solution. Now, let's jump into the specs. Now, this computer is not all bad. It has a lot of pros. First things first, the design is very beautiful. It's very compact and it's very portable. You can use it travel light. Now, the display is not full HD or 4K, but it is LED backlit display of IPS technology. That means it's gonna have true tone and it's gonna have all the resolution that you need. Now the processor has two options. It has the Intel i7 with six cores with a base speed of 2.6 or it has the Intel i9 as well, 9th gen with eight cores and 2.3. Now, both of these are fantastic and will do the job just fine. Now in storage, we have SSDs, that's perfect. That will make your load up and your export times a bit quicker. And then the RAM memory is perfect. We have 16 gigabytes expandable to 64, that's perfect. Now, the real problem with the MacBook Pros when you're editing in Adobe Premiere Pro is the graphics card. Both of these models use the AMD Radeon Pro series 5300M or the 5500M. Now, if you compare these graphic cards to the standard or base options of dedicated graphic cards from NVIDIA, they're blown away. These Radeon Pro 5500M aren't very good. They can't compete with NVIDIA right now. Having said that, not all AMD cards are bad, but in this case, the ones that the MacBook Pro has, they are quite slow and they won't do the job quite well. Okay, having that said, let's jump into the Windows. Now, first things first, we have a monster. We have the Dell G5 15 inch. Now, this computer is a bit bigger, a bit heavier than the MacBook Pro, a lot less aesthetic, but look at the price tag. For $1,400, you're getting a computer capable of doing animation. First things first, it has an Intel i7 processor from 9th gen with six cores. That's very good and it works up to 4.5 gigahertz. Now, it has 16 RAM expandable to 32. And the thing that really catches my eye is the graphics card. This graphics card is amazing. It's the NVIDIA RTX 2060. Now with this graphic card you're not going to have any problems while editing drone footage or 4K, even 6K or 8K. It's fantastic. Now this computer as well has a backlit LED display that's very good, an IPS system and that will allow you to have a true tone. It also has and Intel, two internal storages, one hard drive and one SSD, that's as well good. Okay, so this computer is half the price of the MacBook Pro 16 inch and it will perform much, much efficiently and much better. Okay, next up is a monster, is the Razer Blade and this computer is beautiful. Physically, it kind of copied the style of the MacBook but adapted to Windows. Now, this computer is fantastic. It has Intel i7 from the 9th gen with six core and it has an even better graphics card than the last one that we saw. It has the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Max-Q. Now this computer, you can use it for anything, even for animation, I would, I would tend to say. It has a full HD display with a 2040 Hertz refresh. That means the screen will run very smooth on video and particularly in gaming. Now it has 16 gigabytes of RAM expandable to 64. So this computer is fantastic and it comes in with an SSD of 500 gigabytes. So this computer is very good. I would highly recommend it. The price tag is almost equipable to the MacBook Pro. So it's a heavy investment, but it's worth it, guys. Okay, next up is the Omen from HP, 15 inch. The Omen is the gaming gamma of HP, so you can expect high results. It has Intel i7, 9th gen as well, six cores, and as well, it has 16 RAM expandable to 64 with a good graphics card. It's not the best, but it's a very good graphics card. It has a good graphics card, the NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti with 6GB. Again, two storage devices, one SD and one hard drive. This computer is pretty good and it's available $1,400. So that's quite accessible. It's a very good computer at a very good price. Okay, next up is the Asus Republic of Gamers. Now, Asus hasn't had best reputation over the years but the specs are pretty good it has a full hd display 15 inch six cores intel i7 9th gen and with a graphics card a bit better than the last omen gtx 1650 it's quite good now this computer has quite a downside apart from the horrible aesthetic of it <laughs> 
it has an 8 GB RAM only, but it's expandable to 32, so you would have to invest in some RAM cards in the future. But for the price tag of $1,300, it's quite accessible, it's very good. Okay, next up we come to the Legion from Lenovo 740. Now this computer is also very good. It has an Intel i7 from the 9th gen. Again, 6 cores, that's pretty good, with a base speed of 2.6 and a max speed of 4.5, that's quite good. Now it has 16GB of RAM, that's very good as well. And the storage devices are as well, again, very good. Now it comes in with a very powerful NVIDIA, the RTX 2070 of HG. Now this graphic card, again, it will serve for Premiere Pro, for Photoshop, for After Effects, for anything you throw it. You can even throw in there some real engine editing. So it's a very good computer. The only thing that I would take away from it is the screen, that it doesn't have a true tone quality or IPS standard. But again, for the price, $1,700, it's a pretty good bargain. Okay, next up we have its bigger brother, the Legion Y740, but this time it's the 17 inch display. Now in this case, it is full HD with the IPS system, so this is, has true tone. Now it has the Intel i7 8 core, that's amazing, a very good processor. And then we have 16 gigabytes of RAM, expandable to 32, a very good SSD with 500 gigabytes, and then we have a very good NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080. Now this graphics card is incredible with 8 gigabytes of storage. Now this is a very good computer, but as, as we can see, the price tag goes up to $2,400. So if you had the money, I would highly recommend this one. Okay guys, so those are some of the computers that I'm looking to invest in or looking to choose between to upgrade my current setup. So I'll link them all down below. And just a little disclaimer, if you do buy anything through those links, I get a little commission, so it's a little way you can support me. I hope you liked the video. If you did, can you please give it a like? It really makes a difference and consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I upload the next video. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.